So in today's lecture, we will talk about how to calculate beverage costs. And since we've already talked about how to calculate food costs, um, this is actually quite easy or should be easy for a lot of you. Um, the formula is almost the same. We just need to know what to plug in. So the first thing that managers need to know and understand is how do we track and how do we collect data on um, the type of alcohol that we're selling and the type of beverages that we're selling, right? So it's important to understand what form we're selling in. So beer, wine, and spirits, they can be sold in different, you know, uh, I guess, different ways. So beer, you can sell um, as a draft, which is coming out of a tap. You can sell them as a flight, as like a tasting flight. So you get small ones, um, or you can do it in a bottle, in a can. So there are many different ways in a growler. So there are different ways that you can, um, you can actually track or you can serve this. So to track that, you're typically as a manager or as an owner looking at your POS data. POS stands for point of sale. Point of sale systems are anything that your establishment uses to ring in um, the items that people order. So um, whether you're using Aloha or a Labo or a Toast or whatever it may be, it's whatever system that you set up for your servers and bartenders to ring in those items. So it's important to be using the data that that point of sale system software um, gives to you to track your sales histories. So let's say, how many Sam Adams did I sell in the month of September? How many Sam Adams do I sell on a typical Saturday? You know, those are all things that will help you make purchasing decisions or even menu decisions for the future, which is quite important. Um, so when it comes to wine, you know, how do we forecast and how do we look at wine? Well, wine can be sold either by the glass or it can be sold by the bottle, it can be sold by half a bottle, it can be sold by carafe, uh, which is typically two and a half glasses. So um, this is all up to you and keeping an eye on that um, is what the manager's responsibility is. So they will not only set the ways that we are gonna be selling uh, these items, but also how we're tracking them. As far as spirits, spirits are actually the hardest to track. And the reason for this is most spirits are actually not sold just as that one individual spirit. They're typically mixed with something else. So if you think of like an Alabama Slammer, that is a cocktail that can potentially use six or seven different alcohols, but you're only ringing in it as one item. So how do we track this? Well, the point of sale system software actually allows managers to put in exactly what is inside of each drink. So, uh, you know, there will be uh, one ounce of rum and one ounce of vermouth, whatever it may be, um, and you can actually put that into your system. So whenever a server rings in Alabama Slammer, it is actually calculating what potentially uh, you are using and how much of a specific bottle you are depleting by ringing that drink. So it is absolutely possible. Um, the other thing is, like I said, to kind of put everything, making sure that it's tracking correctly to put it into your system. A simple example of that would be a martini. So a martini can typically be um, a vodka or a gin. And uh, how you can set up the system is every single time a bartender or a server rings in a martini, instead of just tracking how many martinis, because that doesn't tell me anything. If I check my data and I can see, okay, I sold 50 martinis on Friday night, what does that tell me as a manager? Nothing, unless I know how many of those martinis were gin and what type of gin, or how many were vodka and what type of vodka. So setting up that point of sale system to say, you know, well, somebody brings in a martini and then it says, is it vodka or is it gin? Then they have to select. And then once they select vodka, then what type of vodka? Is it Absolute? Is it Kettle One? Is it Tito's? Which one is it? So that's very important uh, to do that as a manager. Now, we talked about, you know, the fact that uh, we need to know exactly how many ounces of vodka are in especially these cocktails that we make. These craft cocktails are huge in our industry right now. So we need to understand, you know, if I am bringing in the Alabama Slammer that I mentioned before, um, how can I ensure that my bartenders are not putting in two ounces of rum where I actually, the recipe calls for just an ounce? Well, this is actually called, these are called standardized recipes. And um, a lot of bar managers, this is what they do. It's exactly like running a kitchen. Uh, we have to look at craft cocktails just like we would at recipes that are being executed in the kitchen. So as a bar manager, you actually create standardized recipes for your bartenders to follow. Um, there are many things that are really, they're always really good um, for this, not only the tracking purposes, but also consistency. 
Uh, there are many times where you hear, or even I'm sure it has happened to you or maybe to somebody that you were dining with and they say, they order a drink at the bar, they drink it, and then they're waiting for a table and they sit down at the table, they order the same drink and they drink it. They're like, oh, this doesn't taste the same. Can you please have the bartender at the main bar make it? That's unacceptable. We need to make sure that consistency is kept throughout you know, the restaurant. It doesn't matter which bartender is making the drink. So in order to do that, you actually, as a bar manager, can set up standardized recipes to ensure that your bartenders are making um, the recipes correctly. Now, do they always have to measure them out? Well, I mean, they have to learn. So it, t it typically takes somebody a couple of months to really execute and understand how to properly pour um, you know, a one ounce or half an ounce or two ounces. And they practice by typically using they're kind of these little funnel uh, jiggers, that were, they're called jiggers. So um, they typically, that's how you practice, you know, pouring to make sure that you're actually uh, pouring the right amount. Um, this goes back to also making sure that you are responsibly serving alcohol. So if you, if somebody's drinking a martini and you know that your martinis have two ounces of vodka in them, then you can actually calculate how many vodkas, how many martinis can somebody safely have. Okay, so this, was, this kind of goes all beyond. This is a very big part of, um, of uh, safely uh, serving somebody alcohol. All right, so calculating beverage costs and actually looking at how we're doing this. So there's a couple of things that are really important to know and that you as bar managers must know. From this point forth, these are kind of the facts that you will always need to know. So number one is this formula. It looks exactly the same way as uh, or the same as what we did with food costs, right? But there's a little bit difference that we need to know when it comes to um, alcohol calculations. The first one is that five ounces of wine is typically, okay, that is typically um, a kind of a restaurant standard um, in our industry. And the reason for that is because it makes it easier to calculate how many glasses you are getting out of a bottle. And the reason for that is because each standard bottle, a standard bottle of wine, um, is 750 mLs. And that is actually 25 ounces. So if we have a standard pour of five ounces for our actual glasses, then we know that we are getting, hopefully, um, you know, five ounce pours, we're getting five glasses out of each one bottle. So it makes it very easy for us to track, you know, costs or, or um, revenues from each individual bottle. So that's kind of when it comes to wine. Uh, wine. When it comes to uh, spirits, so we it's kind of important as well. So uh, a one ounce shot is what we refer to as a pony. Uh, one and a half ounce shot, that's a jigger. That's what we refer to. And a two ounce shot is considered a double. So those are kind of just like your um, a bartending lingo. And the reason that's important is because um, in a typical one liter, okay, of spirits, uh, there are 33 ounces. So uh, when I'm calculating, you know, how many drinks or how many drinks I can make out of one bottle, it's very important to know that it has 33 ounces and that potentially if I'm serving two ounces, one ounce, whatever it may be, I can calculate safely how much money, how much revenue I can potentially make um, out of one bottle. All right, so this is very important. This is what you actually have to use this particular slide for your class assignment today that will be due uh, next class. So this is an example of a bottle of wine. So Kim Crawford, Sauvignon Blanc, and you as the restaurant are gonna purchase this for $12.95. So that is what your invoice is to your uh, alcohol distributor. That is what you're gonna um, pay your distributor. So by the glass price that you're setting on your menu, is ten dollars, so it's going to be ten dollars a glass. You're going to bar your bartenders are going to pour five ounce servings, and that's we know that that's a standard pour. We need to make sure that we get five glasses out of each each individual bottle. So, um, the menu price per glass is ten dollars. The menu price for the bottle is thirty two dollars, and here's our formula. So the cost of the bottle goes on the top twelve ninety five, and we divide that by um, first one, we're going to do the bottle cost. So we're going to divide it by $32. That's our bottle cost. So that means that our beverage cost on this bottle is 40.5%. Now that seems a little bit high, right? But there's a couple of things when we, when we talk about this. Now by the glass price, is going to be a little bit different. There's an extra step. The cost of the bottle stays the same, $12.95. But the actual revenue from the bottle increases. 
So it's not gonna be $10, it's gonna be $50. And the reason for that is if we're serving but by the glass, we're actually gonna get five glasses sold from this bottle at $10. So the revenue from this bottle is actually gonna be $50, which brings the cost of the bottle to 25.9%. So this is very important for us as managers because we have to make a decision. Do we serve the bottle just by the bottle? Or do we serve the bottle, or do we serve the wine um, by the glass, right? So in this particular case, you guys might say, well, it's better to serve it by the glass. Absolutely, that you know percentage is much lower. It's twenty five point nine percent, and you are absolutely correct. Is there a reason why somebody might want to sell it just by the bottle? The answer is yes, and the reason for that: once you open up a bottle, there's no telling that you're going to sell every single glass out of it right? It might go bad. So you need to make sure that if you're going to sell it by the glass, uh, you are going to sell all of them. Because if I just sell one glass of this wine and my revenue is just $10, then I've actually lost money on it. So um, that's kind of the, those are the differences with serving it by the bottle or by the glass. So let's take a look at how we track this for alcohol. Now this is the alcohol, you can make a lot of money off of this or you can make zero money off of this if it's not done correctly. So let's take a look at a bottle of um, Absolute. So the purchase price uh, would be somewhere, let's say I made up this number, $24.69. Um, we know that it's a, there are 33 ounces in every bottle. So to make it easy on myself, um, I am actually going to make sure that every cocktail that I sell in my establishment is going to have a two ounce of this actual um, a spirit in it. So at two ounces um, of serving in every cocktail, I know that I'm gonna have 16 and a half servings in each bottle. So this will make it easy for me to calculate how much potential money I could make off of this particular bottle. Um, to make it easier, I'm gonna set a $10 cocktail price for um, all of my cocktails. So what this would mean is I know that I can have 16 and a half servings at $10 out of every single bottle of Absolute. If I do the math, it's very simple. I know that potentially my revenue from one bottle can be $165 if my bartenders uh, follow the standardized recipes. I take the cost of the bottle divided by my potential revenue, and I know that potentially um, the cost of this alcohol bottle is only 15%. That's great. So I can make a lot of money potentially out of a bottle of spirit if it's done correctly. All right, so let's take a look at um, you know purchasing beer and different things. And this kind of, we've talked about this a little bit when we were talking about our beer lesson. Lesson. Very important thing about beer is it has an expiration date. A lot of people don't know that. So we need to make sure that when you're purchasing alcohol and purchasing beer, you also are purchasing the correct uh, date. There is a date on every single bottle of beer. You need to check it. Uh, typically, if your distributor is having a sale on beer, we know that most likely the expiration date is coming to an end. You cannot sell expired beer, so make sure you check that. Also, one of the big things to look at is if you're going to serve a beer in a keg, make sure that you sell enough of the beer while it's actually tapped. So typically, a typical beer, uh, you're going to have around 124 16 ounce servings. So 16 ounces, that's typically the serving of beer um, at major establishment. And once you tap a keg, you typically have about 20 to 30 days to sell that. So looking at your past data, you need to look and make sure, okay, can I actually sell you know, this type of beer, do I sell 124 in 30 days? So you look, you look at your data tracking and potentially if you do not, then it's not worth it for you to do it in a keg. You might wanna just serve it um, in a bottle or in a can.